Hey, Bernice. Hey there, lady. Hi, June. Hi, Charles. How are you, sir? I'm full. Good. I had a good lunch. So Very I'm, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay. Now I'm ready good. for a nap. All right. We got people coming on. There we go. All right. Hey, Veronica. Hey, Wanda. Hi. Yeah, Eloise is out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Naomi, I just saw her pop up. Pop up. Okay. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Eloise? Great, great, great. How's everybody? Good. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Did you have a good lunch? Sure did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you I'm ready? I'm going to make a sound. Pardon? Ooh. Homegrown tomato sandwich. The idea was given to me by Wanda. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I love tomato sandwiches. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, having some tomato sandwiches here fairly soon. Um, this last weekend, I went out and I bought about six uh, different types of tomato plants and, and planted. Mm. So, uh, so, you know, we've got maybe another two months you know that we still have fairly warm weather and stuff so i'm i'm hoping to get some tomatoes off those before too long well, this was my first year planting and growing tomatoes two came up yeah wanda you and, need to turn your volume up or something oh turn the volume up okay yeah because oh. i you know we see the lips moving we can kind of hear what okay. you're saying can you hear me now you're yes. still like really I, I can hear you but you're like really soft Oh, anyway. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, two tomatoes grew. One's red, and that's the one I'm going to eat today. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's get going here. Uh, we're going to jump back into uh, showing you some stuff, and uh, and then we're going to talk about some of the work that you guys submitted. Now, I still cannot get on the county email. All right. So. I don't know what they're going to do about that, but hey, we'll play it by ear, right? Right. Okay, so I wanted to kind of pick up where I had left off here. Um, and we've got the, the three sisters there. Now, again, you know, this is, a, this is a plain air painting. So this is not something I sat in the studio and did. Uh, it's a fairly quick painting, about two and a half hours uh and that was kind of done right and so there's you know within two and a half hours as complicated as this painting is uh you know there's not a lot of time for like real refined blending and stuff like that you're just trying to get it down capture the light shadow the big forms and shapes and then kind of move on but uh you know i've i really like this painting i was i was very happy with the way it turned out uh, and the whole experience out there. Um, this is a this is a studio painting, okay. And this is something that uh, I did a couple years ago. And there's kind of a story behind it. Uh, if you again, you know, it goes back to mythology. And um, actually, I just saw a thing, a YouTube video, and it was talking about uh, the the title of it was where did the gods come from, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, they were talking about the early Egyptian gods and the fact that um, there was one creator and then they spun off all these different deities. And there was a goddess for the heavens and a god for the earth, right? And so what they would do is they would get together you know, um, you know, every day or every night and, you know, kind of become a couple and then, you know, they would do what they, they did, you know, in their respective times, uh, either day or night. But uh, they were actually, it's, it's a bit incestuous. They were actually brother and sister. Um, but again, you know, this is heaven meets earth uh, kind of idea here. 
That right. is very offensive to me. Pardon? I don't care. That is offensive to me. I do not care for that. In oh, that seat? Too intimate, yes. Okay. All right. I didn't mean to offend anybody, but you know. Okay, I'll so this is, it. pardon? I just said I'll get over it. <laughs> oh, you'll get over it, okay. All right. Yeah, I'm sure it's not the worst thing that's happened to you so far in life. Um, but uh, this is a, a portrait actually, again, this was done at uh, Callenwald. Uh, again, this is a portrait of a model that I had sit for the class for a couple of weeks and uh, very intense look on her face. You know, that's the, that's the thing about painting models is that, um, you know, they kind of get in their own zone, you know? Mm -hmm. And- uh, Yeah, cause she don't look too happy. Yeah, you know, they're not gonna sit there and smile for three hours. So, you know, and everybody's painting them. But, uh, you don't again, put any nails to model, do you? Pardon? Not many male, male will do the models, right? Oh, no, I, I would, uh, no, I hire male models as well as females. Okay. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. particularly for like portraiture or things like that. And even with mm -hmm. figure, you know, mm -hmm. I try to hire both. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got to get good at, you know, doing both males and females. So, right. uh, now this is a piece. And one of the reasons I wanted to show you this to you is this is actually not an oil painting. This is an acrylic painting. Mm. And it's done on a, um, it's like a hard panel. And you'll notice uh, if you look in the background, the color is kind of soft and kind of washy and drippy. Uh, and that was done, you know, before I ever started the actual, you know, head. Uh, I just laid in some loose color back there and it was very wet and uh, let it run and, and sort of do, do its own thing. And then I superimposed the you know actual figure on top of this. But now this is an acrylic painting, um, and again it was a uh, it was a life uh, it was a demo. And I actually did this at Benson, yeah, back in 2017. And so you know we had this young woman sitting, and she was all made up, you know, in her her uh, you know costume there. Uh, and she was Indian, obviously, uh, but, uh, you know, painted this in probably about uh, three to four hours as a demo. Okay. And uh, here's another, another demo, <laughs> again, got a lot of demo paintings. Um, and again, um, again, a model, you know, sitting and, you know, we wanted to do something a little unusual, the angle of her head, you know, things like that. And this particular young woman, she had a very kind of unusual uh, face and features. And I, I really liked her face. It's really interesting face. Uh, but uh, this was done in oil. And again, kind of treated very similar to the acrylic painting that you just saw, where I went in and I just laid in like a really wet, loose sort of tone in the background, and then developed, you know, the actual, um, you know, face and shoulders and things, you know, from there. I have a question. Yes. When you do a close up like that, does the model get close closer to you, or is it in a the spot? Yeah, I think I was probably I was probably like you know maybe five or six feet away from her at the most. Yeah, you've got to be able to see, you know, and particularly with a portrait, you know, uh, unless you're doing a, uh, a full figure, right? Uh, we got uh, Sabrina calling. I don't know why she's calling, but I'm in the middle of my class. Um, I'll call her back after class. Um, okay. But no, when you know when you're doing a portrait if if you're basically focused on the head and shoulders then you know then you want to get close enough that you can really see what you're doing right being you know back 15 feet and trying to paint you know uh you know a, a real accurate portrait is 
yeah, probably not going to work unless you have exceptionally good eyesight. And as I've gotten older, my eyesight's okay, you know, but I need reading glasses for anything within three feet of me. So, um, this is a uh, this is a painting that I did, and it's um, I want to say they're they're. I want to say they're camellias. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Camellias. It's a um, pretty picture. Pardon? It's a pretty picture. I like it. Yeah. I mean, you're um, painting. You know, again, you know, just wanted to try to get sort of the form and the shape of the flower and the leaves. Um, you know, really liked what was going on. Uh, they were sitting there in a bottle, you know, with the light coming in through a window you know, behind it mm -hmm. and uh, illuminating the wall behind it. And this is a fairly large painting. It's uh, about a 30 by 30. Uh, oh, okay. So it's pretty good size. You said they were sitting in a bottle. Did the, uh, the, the picture itself, was it long? Uh, the, um, the subject itself, was it longer, the bottle? Yeah, it's like a real tall bottle. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, and I just I'm showed sort of like right. the neck of the bottle. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because the focal point was really the flowers, mm -hmm. you know, okay. and and somehow you know them being stuffed into a whiskey bottle was yeah you know not that important. So mm -hmm. uh, this is a model that posed for us at Benson, and again this was a I think this was a three or four week long life painting that we did there, and uh, so you know I'd set up the model stand put a background behind it, um, you know, put, uh, you know, actually, you know, I painted the model and then I painted the painting of the model, you know, into the painting, you know, mm -hmm. as, as another element. There was, there was a frame there and there was another painting in it, but I decided to kind of repeat, um, you know, right. the image. Just playing around. Uh, this is actually a studio painting, uh, but it was taken from a plein air painting that I had done here in Smyrna. And uh, I'd gone out one morning, tried to get the sunrise, you know, as the sun came up. And so this is lo looking eastward from Smyrna uh, off in the direction generally of, of toward Atlanta. Um, and the original was done on maybe about an eight by 10. And then uh, when I came back, uh, this is a, I think a 30 by 40 was the actual size on this. Now. Here's a, and again, this is a, this was a demonstration piece that I did and it's monochromatic, it's oil. And this is on a, about a 40 by 60 canvas. So it's big. And, uh, you know, I was using some big brushes and getting in there. Again, same kind of approach that I'd done with some of the other portrait studies. Uh, I laid a, a very wet tone in the background uh, just to, you know, get something back there. And then I started working with uh, just a clean brush with a little chirp in it and a, a rag, you know, lifting out, you know, the area where the face was and, you know, trying to figure out the composition, you know, before I went back in there with uh, any real opaque paint. And, uh, you know, again, you know, this is a, you know, this is a good size painting. So, uh, get you, uh, and, you know, working larger like that, Again, you know, because you're working oversized, this is much bigger than her head actually was. Um, you know, you can be uh, a lot more accurate, you know, with those proportions and scales and things like that. But, uh, and again, this was probably, it's probably like about a five or a six hour sitting, you know, for that class. Uh, we did a morning session and came back in the afternoon, did an afternoon session after that. And the significance of the hair dripping? Uh, sorry, Wanda? The hair, you have like, the hair is dripping water or? 
the, the hairy... ponytail, the ponytail, uh -huh. at the bottom of it. That's oh yeah, it. yeah. Again, you know, the paint went down. It was kind of wet. Oh, okay. I just let it drip. <laughs> you know. Okay, I thought yeah, you yeah, let it run. Something. Okay, I see. Yeah. yeah, it's that playing with paint thing. Mm. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a another. This is a still life that I did. Um. Paint about paint. Pardon. I say paint brushes. Uh huh. Yeah, these are these are. Uh, it's a set of uh, watercolor brushes from China, and mm. uh, you know it's the uh, the little block and the, and the chop and the the brushes and the little uh, you know dish down here uh, for your water and stuff. And uh, you know the actual. This is a, a copper vase that I had. Uh, it's an arts and crafts here vase. So now I would say I probably worked on this painting for a couple of weeks. Um, you know, this was not a quick painting. This, this was kind of a longer, you know, more involved, you know, piece. Uh, this is a, again, this is a, a, a live plein air painting. And uh, I live in Smyrna now, but I used to live in town uh, in the West End. Mm -hmm. And this is a neighborhood called Capitol View. And this right outside of my, my front door on my loft were these railroad tracks, you know, and uh, that's where the Beltline is now. Mm -hmm. And this is before the Beltline was really put in. And I, I'd gone out there and spent you know, a couple hours, you know, painting this. This is, um, it's, this is called past, you know, past our prime. And um, it's kind of a, it's a still life and it's an apple and a pear. And, uh, you know, again, you know, I like, I like to kind of tell stories with these, uh, still lives that I do. And you'll notice that neither one of these pieces of fruit are exactly pretty or anything like that. And so what it is, is kind of a comment about, you know, I and my partner at the time, and, you know, we're both getting a little older and, you know, so we're not so pretty and everything else, but like, you know, most pieces of fruit, you know, the, uh, the fruit gets sweeter, you know, as it gets more ripe, right? And it may not look so good, but it actually, you know, tastes pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. lady can attest to that since she she gets that uh, <laughs> misfit. Yes, I can. Yeah. this is so true. Yeah, um, yeah. The the really you know pristine looking shiny stuff uh, isn't isn't really ripe. You know, so when you bite into it, it may look good, but it may not taste so good. But you know, you get a a pear, and you know it's beginning to turn brown, things like that. Um, and then, um, you know, it gets, it gets sweeter with time, so. This is a, another actual um, demo that I did. And we were out uh, on location and I was doing a demonstration. This is a, a, a painting that was completely done. Well, I'd say completely, it's probably, like 99% done with a uh, palette knife. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's an oil and uh, it was done on a, on a hard board surface. And uh, so, you know, we were out, you know, at this location painting that day. And that was two of the people uh, who were in my class and they were, had their paint boxes out. They were out there painting. So they got to be the subject for that day. <laughs> Um, again, this is a, this is a, another life painting, um, and it was done, again, you know, at our plein air class at Benson. Uh, we would hire a model, and, uh, you know, toward the end, we, we pretty much so work with models a lot there. Uh, so this young lady came out, and she was sitting, and this is over at the park, that's uh, right there at Morgan Falls on, you know, the actual uh, Sandy Springs, the city park 
that's up above Morgan Falls. Charles, I have a question. Yeah. In these classes that you have, when you have models, do you mm -hmm. have any examples of the work that the students did? Uh, not in this mix, no. But okay. Yeah. Because I would like to see um, what perspective that this others the students drew of this model. I'll just use her uh -huh. as an example. Yeah. I, I, you know, what I'd like to see is because most of the things that you're showing are beautiful and they're like real to life. But I, I lean toward the abstract, and I wonder, did somebody draw her, uh, paint her in an abstract view? Yeah. Uh, in this particular case, I'd say no, not so much. But, okay. you know, I mean, there were probably 14 to 15 people out there, and you mm -hmm. got different angles and, you know, totally different interpretations. You know, right. Of her. Okay. And uh, I do. I've got, I've got some archive files of uh, some of the things that people uh, painted. And if you would like me to show you guys some of those, yeah, I could do that. You know, yeah, I would like to it, it, yeah, I would like to see the same uh, model, but from different people. And I'd like to see their take on, you know, what that person's uh, image is in their mind. Okay. Yeah. All right. I will make a note of that. And Thank you. Try to do something like that. Uh, this is a started off as a plain air piece, um, even though it was a, a fairly large canvas. I think it was, I think it was like about a 15 by 30 or a 20 by 40. And uh, I was up in, uh, this is in North Carolina. It's on the uh, Notley River. And I had gone up there with a group. Uh, of artists and we'd gone out for a couple of days to do some plain air painting and this this old house was on the other side of the river from us and I got up early in the morning and began this and um, I knew I didn't have a lot of time so you know and plus in the morning it was so foggy you really didn't have like a lot of color out there it was all kind of gray tones and so you know, I kept the painting fairly monochromatic. Uh, and then after it dried, and I came back uh, and I was back in the studio. Then I started actually using glazes uh, to begin to add more subtlety to the color. And so you can see some changes in the temperature and color, you know, in these areas, you know, mm -hmm. throughout here. Uh, this is another plain air piece I did. Um, this is the Okoe River. I was up there painting. And then this is a, a piece where I did a, you know, just a sky. Okay. And Eloise was, uh, you know, commenting on the fact that George Ennis, you know, seemed to really kind of focus on skies and and that's what this piece is all about. You know, just the cloud structure and the light, you know, just there at sunset. Uh, this again, this is one of the plain air classes. And uh, I actually, you know, did this piece um, with, you know, it just made a nice painting, you know, with the students, you know, they're painting the river and the light you know, coming in from behind them. Uh, this is a, uh, this is another plain air piece I did. And this is up in, um, uh, I want to say toward crab apple or alpharetta in that area. Yeah, this is another model. Uh, this was done uh, not at Benson. This is in a, you know, a, a group of artists. We had hired her, you know, to take this pose. And then this is another plein air piece. And this is uh, up in uh, ball ground. And this is some land that uh, I had bought up there. And I'd gone up there one day uh, to just paint. And this is uh, like right over along this line right here, 
that's where the Etowah River runs through and the property backed up to the river. Okay. So, so anyway, there's some of my work, you know, and uh, thought I'd kind of share that with you guys. And then we have some of the stuff in, and some of the stuff, you know, we may have seen before. Again, I haven't been able to get to the county email today. And uh, this is a piece that Bob sent in. And he did this series of, um, these were plaster cast. And they're, you know, they're just black and white monochromatic paintings. Um, and evidently they're not very large. If you look at the scale of that next to, it looks like a phone and a stylus. So. That's a, uh, those are uh, eight by 10 uh, little canvases. Eight by 10? Okay. Yeah. All right. And you're here. Okay. I didn't see you. Yeah, I got, got finally got here. Okay. Um, you know, and all these studies, I mean, they're, they're really nicely done little, little studies and, <clears throat> You know, if uh, you don't actually have to use a lot of color uh, in your paintings, uh, it's really, you can do an awful lot, you know, just with the values. Uh, this is something that Fran sent in. This was a t-shirt design that she had done. But then uh, this is a, a print, uh, kind of like a linoleum block print. And she's taken the print and she's doubled it you know, using two different colors, you know, to make an impression on it. Uh, this is a silk dye painting piece. And then she actually added a, a real butterfly that she had found to it. And this is another piece that she did again, you know, it's kind of graphic, kind of like a poster kind of whimsical, yeah. You know. It's a nice piece, you know, it's kind of fun. And uh, she talked about this one the other day a little bit. It's a, she started off with just this sort of abstract background and kind of felt like it needed a little bit more. So she ended up, you know, putting the figure of this angel in there. And then, yeah, this is not Fran, this is, uh, that's Wanda. Wanda. Oh, me, Wanda. Me. Okay. Me, Wanda. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so this is a still life that she's working on. And we talked about that the other day. So yes. have you gone back to work on this anymore, Wanda? Uh, no, I started doing something else. I figured if I step away from it for a little bit, then come back okay. to it. And I still want to set it up, like you said, so I can see how the shadows actually are. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. That that would be kind of an important thing to do. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you want to take some photographs and things, if you want to change the lighting, you know, a couple of different positions to really look at it and see, you know, what happens as the light moves, you know, around those shapes and, and what, you know, not only just, you know, around it, but maybe higher or lower. And then what the effect of the cast shadow is, you know, as you do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think that would be a good, a good learning lesson for you. Yes, um, absolutely. To work with. Uh, well, this yeah. is something that uh, Ilan had uh, submitted. And again, you know, it's, it's a really fun piece. It's a yes. mixed media piece. And, um, you know, he had taken these images of the uh, girl with the pearl earring and um, evidently, you know, superimposed them on these different models' bodies, um, and then, you know, different situations, and then uh, took Vincent Van Gogh's face and then superimposed it on top of, in this case, it looked like James Bond, uh, you know, a guy driving a car, you know, uh, maybe somebody who's a little more of a hipster here. So, but, you know, again, just kind of a fun thing to play with. Um, and again, this is a mixed media piece. He, uh, he doesn't really consider himself 
um, you know, much of a, a painter or an artist, but again, you know, a lot of it has to, you know, really kind of do with the underlying ideas, you know, behind it and, and then what, you know, how you treat those. And there's a lot of different approaches to it. You know, if, if you want to kind of think about this and kind of compare it to other artists, you know, it's a collage piece. So, you know, people like Romare Bearden, um, Miro, um, you know, Picasso, they all work in collage. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's all fair. You know, it's all, all, all good stuff. You get, you get there how you get there. Right. Uh, this is uh, Jean Goldstein's, and this is a, a painting of hers. And I'm, I'm thinking, this looks like probably an oil. Uh, she does a lot of watercolors and things like that, but this, this kind of looks like an oil piece. And I don't know whether she's here or not. Uh, I'm guessing probably not, but. Uh, you know, kind of nicely done. Um, I talked a little bit about if if I were going to paint something like this, then I would probably change the shape of this tree because it seems to kind of parallel, you know, these two tree trunks. Uh, and it doesn't really, it's, it's a little all too uniform. And I would just kind of like to see it, you know, maybe a little little more of it here and, and kind of running more diagonally than straight up and down, okay. okay. Um, this is another piece that she did. And this is a painting of the city of Atlanta at night. And so I think she did a pretty good job at, you know, getting the effect of uh, some of the lights and things and how they react on surfaces of the buildings and the roadways, things like that at night. Mm -hmm. The only real downfall with this painting right now is the fact of how she uh, took the photograph. And I talked a little bit about that the other day, because you got a, you know, like a really hot spot right here where the light, she was using a light on it. And the problem with oil paint and even acrylic for that matter of fact, it can get a little bit kind of slick and glossy. And so when you photograph these, you know, try to try to photograph them in uh, fairly diffuse light where you don't have a, a lamp or anything shined directly on, on the piece. Otherwise, you're going to get those. Okay. And this is a piece by Lady. And she was saying that this was done on a piece of, I guess, cardboard. Uh, that or like a bolt of fabric is written uh, wrapped around, and uh, so she used that as a uh, you know as a canvas or as a you know a substrate, and then she painted on top of it, and then that led her to a series of pieces that she did. Now she was talking about this yesterday a little bit, or not yesterday, the day before. And she was saying that she did some of this, I guess, as a poured painting. And she's here. So why don't you tell us a little more about this? Uh, not so much a poured painting, Charles. Um, I actually started off by just putting dabs of paint all over the uh, surface of the cardboard. And then okay. I, I, I inflated a balloon. And I used the balloon to dip it into the paint to make the different... Um, uh, I, I, I call them starbursts throughout the entire painting. I even dabbed the balloon all on the side because it had a lot of paint at the bottom of it. And so that's how I, I did it. And, and again, I'm sorry for the picture, but it's so much more vibrant and pretty, mm -hmm. you know, hanging on my wall than it shows up in that picture. I just yeah. have really bad lighting in my living room. Yeah. It's yeah, well, nice. it's I, like I it. want you to reshoot this, you know, try to get some better lighting on it. Um, yeah. But so it's still a very, it. very nice uh, yeah. set of um, painting. Yeah, it's, it. it's a nice series of, of mm -hmm. paintings. And, yeah. you know, as and the a balloon. Series, it all kind of fits well, together really nicely. Who would have thought of a balloon, you know? 
How do you dab with a balloon? Um, Elsie, what I did was, um, again, I think Charles has mentioned this before about YouTube and is it I, Elon? He's talked about YouTube. YouTube has everything on it. I mean, if I had YouTube 30 years ago, I would be, woo. But they, <laughs> that's what they paint with balloons and Q-tips and um, saran wrap. And you'd be surprised the effects you get from ordinary things that you don't think about. And so one of the artists, she actually puts water in some of her balloons to get weight. But I just used, just blew it up. And you just take the bottom part of the balloon, not the part with the tie, but the, the round part. Right, the round and you just part. dab it into the um, acrylic paints or whatever paints you're using, and you just put it in there and take it out, and the effect is amazing because it's different layers of paint, mm -hmm. and so um, the colors are just vibrant and it just explodes, and it's so pretty. It really is, and it's a balloon. I'll have to yeah, try that. One day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just go on YouTube and look for um, the poor painters and and using a balloon. And you'll be so surprised. You'll just be like, that's just amazing. It really mm -hmm. is. Yeah, yeah. I've done the saran wrap, tips and a lot of other stuff, but never balloon. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just, uh, it, there's yeah, a lot I, of good stuff. Yeah, I've, I've seen people work with saran wrap or aluminum foil. And, yes. you know, they'll, they'll load the surface of a canvas with paint and then they'll lay the saran wrap down and then they'll take their hands and sort of begin to, you know, push. Fold it up? And, well, not so much that, but just kind of twist it around, you know, and kind of push it with your fingers and then they'll lift it off, you know. And it, it's a way of being able to kind of manipulate the paint and, and move it around for a little while, you know, without actually using a brush. Um, and, you know, you get kind of, you could get, kind of similar effects with things like that. But, you know, adding, you know, using different types of things to, uh, you know, put the paint down with, or then once the paint is down, you know, taking it, manipulating it with, you know, things like you said, you know, plastic or whatever, um, you know, adding things into the paint, you know, mm -hmm. such as if it's like really wet paint, you can take salt and sprinkle yeah. into it. And uh, particularly with watercolor, because watercolor is really sensitive to that. And and it will soak up a lot of the pigment, leaving you these kind of lighter, you know, spots or patterns. Uh, people use that, you know, as trying to make like a night sky. And, you know, you put down a big area of blue, um, like acrylic, that's still kind of wet and then you sprinkle the salt into it and you let it sit until it's dry. And then you rake away the salt and what you have left is you've got all these little white, you know, specks that, you know, begin to look like Starbuck first. Uh, you know, so it's kind of an effective technique for things like that. Uh, this is a figure that Naomi did. Really nice. And I'm trying to figure out why it is I guess she shot it that way. Um, at any rate, you know, she, she's kind of playing with this color uh, thing and I'm still trying to push her to think of the color more as value rather than color. And uh, I think she's working on that. So she, she seems to be getting closer you know, and little by little, you know, these are beginning to kind of, you know, pull together. This is a, a horse that she did. And again, this looks like a watercolor or some kind of water media, maybe acrylic that's been thinned down. No, it's water. It's watercolor? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. And this is a nice, you know, it's a nice study of a horse head. Um, you know, it kind of feels like it's moving away from you. You know, like he's, like you're standing back behind his shoulder. Is it from a live horse? No, no. Is it from a picture, Naomi? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Is it a horse you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a. Again, you know, it's a, a woman's face, and you know, out of all of these that you've done so far, Naomi, you know. Uh -huh. 
this one's working really well. You're beginning to, you know, you still have that little bit of, you know, the eyes and things, the center line of the face aren't quite right on yet, but you're getting a lot closer. And uh, this is a really nice piece. Yeah, I, I like the way this turned out. Okay. Again, you know, I want you to be more mindful of value, you know, more than color. Um, now here's an example. Okay, you've got a horse head. And, you know, here if you kind of squint your eye down, you know, the value structure, you know, on this horse's face, even though he's basically yellow, orange, and blue, um, work really, really well, okay? And you still see the structure of the head. So you're, you're definitely getting a lot closer in here now. And, you know, I like, I like your choice of colors. They're not quite as raw. They're still, you know, very distinct, you know, warmer, cooler, you know, one's definitely a blue, one's definitely an orange. Um, but yet they're muted down enough and they seem to kind of hold together a lot better than uh, some of the earlier things that you were doing. Okay. Are these watercolors now? Water. These are watercolor. Yeah. And they're all on, on paper or is it on paper? On uh, watercolor paper. Uh-huh. That's really pretty. Thank mm -hmm. you. I like yeah, th this is really, this is a really nice piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So I would definitely, you know, take the time to, you know, maybe put that one in a frame. Oh, really? Um, oh, okay. You know, get oh. it, yeah, get it under some glass. And stuff. It's, it's, it's a beautiful little piece. Oh, How big is this? Uh, not big. Maybe um, uh, eight, uh, not eight by 12, maybe uh, eight by seven or something. I don't know. I forget. Mm -hmm. But it's not big. Okay. All right. Not big. Yeah. Very nice. Well, okay. So I've got a challenge for you. You know, maybe. It's bigger. Well, yeah, maybe maybe instead of doing watercolor, you know, you get uh, like about a 20 by 30 canvas or something and try to do something like this. Oh, it makes either, it huge? Yeah, with either, and, and yes, make it larger and, you know, keep it as loose as this is. You know, Keep it what? As loose, you know, yeah, yeah it, it doesn't, it looks kind of immediate and it's kind of like the paint went down real nicely and everything on it, and you didn't slutch with it a lot. So, you know, try to keep some of that fresh feeling to the painting, even if you did it larger, right? And, okay. And real direct. Could, could be a fun challenge for you, okay. And uh, yeah, so this is Wanda's painting. We kind of talked about that a little bit earlier. And then Wanda, is this the piece you were asking me about? It doesn't have a yeah. tree in it. No, no, no. This is something different. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I got this from you, um, I guess, this week. Yeah. And I know that you had done a drawing of this, right? Yeah, I did. Uh huh. Yeah. And I see you're working with uh, fabric or yeah, yarn. It's yarn. It's yarn. Uh huh. Okay. All right. And, and so the actual figures here, the faces and the arms and things like that, that's all paint, right? Yeah, yeah, that is. Well, some of it's paint. Uh-oh, you went away. Wanda, can you turn your... Yeah, I see you talking, but I can't hear you. <laughs> but the butterfly looked like it was added. Yeah, I added the butterfly to give it a little bit of, you know, oh, around the edge of the braids. You, uh -huh. you put the gems in around the edges of the braids. Right. Yeah, like mm -hmm. right around here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh that's a gray braid going down. It's what kind? Of? It's like a grayish color. You know, I like to put a little bit of uh, right here. Senior senior in my pictures. Everybody's uh -huh. not young all the time. Okay. <laughs> so Wanda, how did you attach the, the yarn to the artwork? Well, after I braided my pieces, I took uh, some uh, uh, hot glue. Oh. Okay. All right. 
And is this is this on a canvas or is this on like? Yes, this on the the flat canvas. Uh, the okay, like a canvas panel. Yeah, that's what. Okay, it's on. so it's not flexible. It's it's kind of. No, it's stiff. stiff. It's okay. Stiff. All Normally right. on my other canvases, I have soft canvas, and I go through the canvas when I'm doing work. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah, I'll All see right. you do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I like where this is going. Um, are you gonna? You got plans to do anything more to it? Well, I'm going to try to clean his arm up a little bit because I was trying to bring a little bit of the the the, the beam from the light on his arms. Mm -hmm. so it wasn't it wasn't working very well, so I'm just going to clean that up. Okay, all right. Now I'm I'm kind of taking it that this is like a sun or something back there. The light. It's just just a luminate light. That's all it was. I was trying to give it a tropical effect. Uh huh. That's why those colors are blended in. Okay. And is oh, they, this... have these, they have these Crayola uh, brushes that come with paint already in them. Oh, and okay. They, and, that, and that's how I did the outside. Okay. Blending the blue and the green together and the All white. Right. Is is the paint, is it like a watercolor? Is it an acrylic? What, what kind of paint well, is it? Well, it, it comes inside a like a, a brush type thing. It's got a brush, mm -hmm. a fine tip on the end. Right. Brush, but it's a Crayola. It must be acrylic. I would take it. No, it's more like a watercolor, and I just used that and blended it all in as I went around. Okay, all right. I never saw so, anything like that before. I, I saw it. I said, "What is this?" I bought it, and I said, "Oh, okay, it's pretty nice." Okay. Um, so here I've got a comment about this light area right here. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, with with it as bright and light as it is, yeah. You lighten the faces right here. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you get the effect of light actually, you know, being behind their head and kind of lighten lighting some of that up. Okay. And yeah. all of that area right here is working fine, but when you get out here to the edge, okay. You know, it looks like you're trying to soften and blend it, but it's it's really not very soft. Okay. It could be softer out here, all right? Um, and you might test and see if, if, you, if it is, in fact, watercolor and you can just wet that edge and okay. begin to soften it up a little bit. I think that would help because that, that hard edge right here is sort of distracting from right here, and that's your focus. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. And so just soften yeah. that back a bit right along in there. Okay. And, and I think you'll be fine. Okay. Oh, good, okay. What size and, is that, Wanda? Uh, that's a 16 by 20. Okay. Very yeah. nice. And you were talking, you know, you were talking about the arm. Yes. And so it's kind of the same thing um, as with your still life, right? Yeah. Um, you know, if, if the light's kind of behind them, you know, maybe, and it's a maybe, okay. you know, maybe you would see some light, you know, along the edge of the arm, maybe in here, okay. but probably not down in here because her body is oh, in the back. Oh, the yes, shadow. yes, I see. Okay. okay. So be careful, you know, when you're working on this arm, really, where you lay that light in. And I'm kind of thinking, because of the way their figure is, uh, and the position of each of them, that okay. if he did get any light on his arm, it would really just kind of be like right in this area. Okay. And then okay. the rest of that would be, you know, pretty much so in some kind of shadow. Oh, okay, okay. Right? That's nice, but yeah, uh-huh, thank you. That's okay. Yeah, so just, you know, I mean, you know, be careful with something like that. You know, I don't know if, you know, maybe you have somebody at the house, you know, where you're sitting, that could actually take a pose and you could put a light behind them and they okay. could kind of take that pose and you could see where the light and shadow were. Of course, you'd okay. have to have two people because they, okay. they'd have to embrace someone. Well, my know. daughter and her husband, I have them do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could get them, yeah, you could get them to pose. Um, and then, you know, again, get them to, you know, even if you didn't have like a spotlight or something like that, get them to 
stand in front of a window with a lot of sunlight coming in it oh, and then get yes. on the other side of them and you know maybe take a photograph of that oh yeah okay That's a good and that idea. would give you more of an idea of you know where you would see light where you would see shadow okay, okay. yeah sounds I have, good. Thank you. I have a question for wanda oh okay, okay. hey wanda do you do any other um artwork with yarn or threads or things like that like oh yes crochet or knit yeah i do okay yeah i've got a lot of artwork that uh I draw and then I do yarn on their clothing, their hair, face, uh, maybe a chair they're sitting in. I mean, do you do other things? Like, do you crochet or knit? Oh, yeah, I crochet and I knit and uh, make uh, quilts. Yeah, I do all that. Okay, yeah, I can tell. I can tell because the, the hair almost looks like real hair. It's so perfect. <laughs> oh, you know? thank you. That's, you know, that means that you know how to handle yarn and things like that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I love this. Yeah, nice. yeah. Well, she's done, a, I've seen you do a couple of pieces like this. Yes. Where, you know, they're mixed media pieces and things. And those are always really, really nicely done. You know, you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I love doing it. I love doing well, it. Well, you know, you know, you're really good at handling those kind of like craft materials, like yarns and fabrics and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um. And it makes a really interesting piece. You know, you, you've got a good eye for pattern and color and stuff like that. And so, you know, use those strengths that you have. Yes. Um, you know, and work on the areas, like you said, you know, you're kind of working on your drawing, you're working on your painting. And, you know, the more that you do things like that, and rather than trying to figure it out or just make stuff up, you know, a lot of times, you know, borrow people. You know, yeah. I borrow people all the time, you know, get them to take a pose, you know, look at the lighting, try to figure out, you know, what would actually happen there? What would I really be seeing? And, uh, and then try to incorporate that into your painting or your, your mixed media piece. And it makes it, you know, a lot more credible and, and gives it more strength, you know, overall, okay? Okay, I'll do that, thank you. Yeah, so it's all, you know, it's always worth, you know, taking a little bit of time a little bit of extra care, a little bit of extra time when you're working on these things to try to figure them out, you know. Um, yeah, it took me about almost three months to do this. Took you almost two months to do it? Yeah. 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 You know, it, it's kind of the same thing, you know, if you're painting a portrait or something like that, you, um, you know, it, it takes as long as it takes, you know, to just keep working on it till you get it where you really want it. And, uh, you know, particularly if you're doing like, you know, a commission piece, you know, you want to do the best work you can. But okay. even at that, even if you're not doing a commission piece and this is just a personal art piece, you know, I, th I think it's the nature of people who like to create and make things. You always want to do it at the best level you can. Absolutely. And so, you know, constantly challenging yourself to try to get better, mm -hmm. you know, and, and take it further than you've taken it before. Um, you know, that's, you know, I think, I think that's an important part of being an artist and trying to grow and trying to develop your work. And, yeah. and you know, using, you know, approaching this from kind of a non-traditional point, you know, where you're not just a painter, but you know, you're working with fabric and yarn and all these mixed media things. You know, again, just make sure your work a lot richer and a lot more interesting. You know, because a lot of people have seen, you know, this, this kind of reminds me of the uh, cover for Gone with the Wind, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. You know, it's kind of about the same pose, right? Yeah. But, but, you know, a, you know, having the couple be, you know, a different couple, you know, but also, you know, the fact that you integrated, you know, mixed media into it, you know, again, just makes it a lot more interesting piece. So, so, you know, push it, you know, go further, you know, okay. see what you can do. All right. Thank you. I, I thank you for that. I appreciate yeah. it. Some people, you know, would, would call this, you know, me cracking the whip on you. I, I just... <laughs> You know, I'm just trying to encourage you, you know, to 
you know, take it, take it to the next level, you know, yeah. go further with it. It's a positive you do, push. It's a positive push. Yeah, because you, you, you do some beautiful things. So, in fact, you know, all of you are doing some really good work. So, anyhow, I think we're, well, we got about five more minutes. Okay. And let's see. Okay, I'm getting messages here. All right. At any rate, uh, evidently some people are having trouble getting in. That's why we only have, well, we got 15 people here. Okay. And, um, oh, we got a bunch of, uh, come on. All right. What is this? Chat? Yeah, fine. That's what I want. Okay. Um, Okay, Veronica, I think, of Ashford and Simpson. Okay, the singer is when I look <laughs> at the Okay, there we go. Yeah, actually, there you go. There's, there's another good reference, yeah. And, uh, okay. He looks what like him? Yeah, okay, yeah, I guess Ashford, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was he Ashford or was he Simpson? <laughs> he was. He was. Uh, he was Ashford. He was Ashford. Um, Nick Ashford. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I could never. I could never figure out which was which on on that. Yeah. You know, they yeah. never. Valerie, Valerie Simpson was her name. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess I guess that's kind of about all I've got, you know, to share with you guys today, and we're right at about two o'clock. So yeah. it's been fun. Um, I'm hoping, you know, and, you know, hoping that Fulton County gets itself straightened out and, uh, we get the email, uh, you know, straightened out, but, uh, you know, send me some stuff, uh, drawings, th things like that for Friday and, uh, I'll try to get them up and we'll, we'll try to talk about them. Okay. All right. So you guys have a good Thursday, a good rest of the day. You too. Thank you very much. Thank you Friday. I like Bye, I like Friday. Bye. Of being able to say goodbye to everybody. You know? oh, All right. Yeah. Very good. Much better than the automatic. Just you're gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. You guys bye. have a good night. Come come. Thank on you. Too. Bye. All right.